Hi, this is Jim Janesey. A number of my students in the spring 2010 term complained about the fact that we had so much awkwardness in submitting assignments using Blackboard. It only allowed one submission and many times students would email me to see if I had gotten that submission. Then I would check and email them back. They could have been well served by having some automatic response indicating that their assignment had been received. And when some of them had to do a resubmission, of course it was a hassle to go back in and change Blackboard and clear out their old assignment to allow them to submit again. And in that case, I would lose any comments I had already made. I finally gave up on it. I decided that it might just be handier using Gmail for a class account. And it's worked out superbly, and I thought I'd show you how this works. So here, I'm getting into an account, GPH205, for a course that's named GPH205 at DePaul University. When I sign into this, now quite conveniently, I've sent myself two emails so that I can show you quickly how I grade these. By the way, on the left, you'll see that there's a very long list of student names. Those names piled up there as they sent me things, and I created labels to file them. So let me show you what happens here. Here is an assignment somebody submitted and they had a question as well. I was going to view the assignment. Well I viewed it and Google opens this up for me and I see it doesn't really look like an assignment. It looks like something that I would have put out, some information about something. So having taken a quick look at that I'm going to write back. Looks like you submitted the wrong thing here. In response to your question, use MLA for your citations. And I'll just send this right back to this person. OK, now comes the fun part. What do I do with this email? Well, I'm going to move it to wherever I had set this up. There already was something for this person. so. It immediately goes into that folder. Here's another one. Looks like they caught the idea that they sent me the wrong submission as well. So look at that. I attached the wrong file. Let me just take a look at this one. So once again, I'll view this. And Gmail opens it up. And it's very good at opening up a variety of different formats. And of course, here you see this paging capability too. So I can read this right here. I don't have to fool around with a word processor to have it open up this document. Now in point of fact, I have students submit PDFs to make it especially easy for me to read these because all modern word processors on both the PC and the Mac can create PDFs. So what am I going to do with this? Let's pretend that I had not yet received anything from this person. So I'm going to move this to, and supposing I don't see that name here. Supposing it was Elmer Fudd. Well, I just am going to create a new label. So I will name this this way. And what happened? Well, two things happened. It created that folder for me that with that label, Elmer Fudd, and it put the document in there in one action. It's very fast. And I was delivered then back to the inbox, which at this point was empty. I find this a very fast way of dealing with incoming assignments from students. And the students like it too. There's another thing that happens here that you haven't even seen, but I turn the vacation response on, and instead of making it a vacation response, I just make it an acknowledgement that what you've submitted has been received. So anytime anybody submits an assignment to me, they immediately get back an email saying, I got it. Isn't this a marvelous thing? I don't know why Blackboard doesn't do it. Maybe they'll catch on to it sometime. It's certainly easy enough to do. But it reassures students that what they've submitted has been received. Very nice thing to have. In addition, because I can so rapidly check this account, and the only thing coming here is student assignments, I'm not sidetracked. I quickly give each student an idea of how they did on this assignment. And if I see that they've missed something obvious, I can quickly just tell them, look, if you want to resubmit this, revise this thing and then submit it again. Very quick turnaround so that they appreciate that, that I can give them feedback quickly. I'm giving feedback much more quickly than I was ever able to do in the past and it's very fast logging into this. So far as I can see, Google doesn't have any problem with you setting up 
an email address specific for your class. And you'll probably have to vary the name here a bit. You might even want to consider setting up a unique email for each course for each term. Wouldn't that be something? Students get used to sending things in there. It's all segregated for you immediately. I see a number of advantages for this. Among them being the fact that since this email address will last only for this term, it's much less likely to get harvested and have spam coming in before the term is over. As an added benefit, Google doesn't seem to have any problem with maintaining your emails out there forever. You don't have the hassle of some space administrator coming over and telling you're going to archive all this stuff because the server is getting filled up. Apparently, Google doesn't have the same space problems. Look at this. They've given me 7 gigs of space. I've used this the entire term and I've used 2% of it. It's just going to stay there unless I explicitly get rid of it. So I can save this for any length of time necessary to deal with incompletes or makeups or anything else that happens beyond the end of the term. This is free. This is responsive. This makes you not so dependent on the kind of support that you get from one or another learning management system. If it suits your purposes as it does mine, here's a tool that you can use. And let's all thank God there's a Google around that makes tools like this available for free. This is Jim Janesey. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Thank you.